Hi everyone, it's Lorelai and welcome to another RPG Maker with tutorial. In the last video, we made two enemies, a cave bat and a crystal fairy that will inhabit our crystal cave dungeon. In this episode, we are going to set up those enemies to be encounters within this map. To set them up as random encounters, you're gonna need to be in the map editor mode. Go to sub menu, edit map information, and go all the way down to encounters. From here, you can add troops to appear either on the entire map or by a specific region ID. We haven't made troops yet, so let's go to the database and make troops for our two enemies. Troops are the set of enemies that can be encountered for a battle, either as a random encounter or through an event. If you look under slime and bat, you'll see under arrange that it has two enemies in this troop, a slime and a bat. Under layout, you can choose where these guys appear specifically in the turn-based layout. Troops are also where you can program certain battle events. Just like regular events, you can add event details here under certain conditions. For example, on the condition of don't run, assuming we put an event detail like show text, oh my gosh, there's a monster, that will run every time you don't run or you don't escape the battle. You could set the condition to turn zero, or you could set the condition to the slime being less than 50% HP. Maybe you would want an event that says, hey, that slime is less than 50%. Or maybe an actor's HP gets really low and you want them to say something. It doesn't even need to be a text command, it can be any sort of event that you could make otherwise. This allows you to control the flow of battle, either through eventing like you would otherwise, or by using special battle events, such as controlling the enemy's HP, MP, TP, their state, if you want to recover all of them, if you want an enemy to appear halfway through, or perhaps an enemy will transform into another enemy. This event section lets you make very creative and fun enemy encounters. We will be looking at battle events more closely when we design our final boss. But for our two enemies right now, nothing too special is going to happen. This is also where you can perform a battle test. This is crucial for playtesting and revising skills and equipment and enemies and parameters. A lot of your time is going to be spent in this battle test to make sure everything flows the way you want it to. I also like battle tests because you can see at a glance a character's stats depending on their level and what they have equipped. So if I change this to level five, you can see that the parameter numbers have increased. And so I can use these numbers when I adjust the values of my skills or my enemies. So let's press this plus sign and make some troops for our two enemies. I'm going to increase it to 10 and make our first troop here. I'm free to skip basic settings and go straight to arrange where I will add a cave bat. Then if I go back to basic settings and auto name it, it'll just say cave bat. This troop is just going to have a single cave bat on it. We will be able to set the encounters to sometimes there's a single cave bat or sometimes it's another troop that has two cave bats. And here I will auto name and under layout, I'm going to move this guy over a little more and then I'll move this guy over a little more. So in our cave, we can encounter either one cave bat, two cave bats, or our third troop will be one cave bat and one crystal fairy. Again, I'm gonna move this cave bat over and then I'm gonna move this crystal fairy over like that. For your game, you are free to add as many troops as you want. Maybe you want two cave bats and a fairy, or maybe a troop with three fairies. For this tutorial, we're just gonna go with these three. Now you may have noticed as I was aligning these images that it's set up for a first person battle system. RPG Maker With actually has two battle systems you can use. By default, RPG Maker With uses a first person or front view battle screen, but you can switch this to side view. If you go down to system, battle, you can select side view here. If you select side view, then I do recommend going back to troops and moving our guys over to the left a little bit more because our characters are going to appear on the right side of the screen. Now that we've changed the battle system and moved our guys over, let's go to battle test and see how it looks. 
By pressing the R bumper, I can add Lyra as a second party member, but I'm going to set their level to three and press OK. OK, so here's the layout. We should probably move our enemy images up a little bit more. Although keep in mind that this game is only going to have two party members. If your game has all four party members, then this might be a good position for them. So let's start strong with Blade Sweep and Radiant Burst on the Cave Bat because the Cave Bat is weak to light. Nice. So this crystal fairy is pretty tanky, but you know what? That's what we wanted, so maybe that's okay. There we go. Okay, we have made our enemy troops and we have tested them in battle. Let's add them to our map. Again, we'll go to edit map information, go down to encounters, and then we'll add our troop through here. First, we'll add Cave Bat with a weight of five. The higher the weight, the more likely this troop will be chosen. And I'm gonna set the Cave Bat to the entire map. For our second troop, I'm gonna go with Cave Bat times two, and I'm gonna set the weight for this to three. Again, the entire map. Our last troop, the Cave Bat and Crystal Fairy, I'm actually going to set this one to a region ID. So let's go back to our dungeon, open up the palette, and use the bumper to go all the way to R. Here we can pick a region number. I'm gonna pick one. And what I'm going to do is actually paint over all of the crystal floors that I can see. And so what this is going to do is make it so that if the player is on this region, which is on the crystal floor, then they'll have the chance of encountering a crystal fairy. This just adds a little bit more flavor to the game in a way that crystal fairies are only on top of this crystal floor. You could also use regions similar to maybe a Pokemon style game where you can only encounter random enemies in tall grass, for example. Or perhaps you have some water element enemies that you only want to appear when around water. You could do that with regions. I think that's mostly it. So if we go back to the palette and select A, we'll return to the original view. So go back to edit map information, encounters, and then let's edit this last troop with the crystal fairy to region ID one. And you can select up to three here. I'm actually going to increase the weight here to seven. So you should be more likely to encounter the cave bat crystal fairy troop on region one instead of just cave bats. And then I'll press okay and we can test this out. Oh. Here we go, we've got our cave bats. And I could fight them, but I'm just gonna try to escape. Awesome. You can edit the encounter rate by going to the map's basic settings and adjusting the encounter steps here. There are also certain traits you can use, such as this encounter decrease item that's built in that uses the effect half encounters. You can also put your enemies directly on the map. And to do that, you would make a new event, choose an image for your enemy. What I like to do is to use a generic fire spirit like this guy, set him to a random movement route, so he's just wandering around. And then on event touch, you can set event detail, scene control, battle process, and then select your troop from here. You can also select same as random, which will use the map's random encounters information. Alternatively, if you wanted to set a random troop between eight, nine, and 10, you would use a variable. And to do that, you would go to game progress, control variable. We haven't used variable one yet, so why not? Let's go for it. And we'll set it to random eight through 10 and say, okay. So it will pick a random number between eight and 10. And then under battle process, you can select variable designation, which will choose that random number that they just rolled. So if we rolled on an eight, then it will choose troop number eight. 
which is cave bat. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove this event because we are using random encounters here. Before we end this video, I thought it would be a good idea to go to our village and add an NPC or two that will give some information about the enemies we will encounter. So I'm going to make a new event, pick a random NPC, trigger action button, and on action, this NPC will say, careful, the bats in the cave are poisonous. And then perhaps the first time we talk to this NPC, he actually gives us an antidote item. So we'll go to party, change items, antidote, increase by one, and then he can say, this antidote will help. Play a sound effect, and then some text that says, antidote acquired. Then we don't want the player to spam this NPC and keep getting antidotes, so we're going to turn on a self switch, A. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this event, paste it, go down to the conditions so that it is for self switch A. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove change items and remove everything that has to do with that antidote. And then press OK. So now when we're in the village, if we talk to this guy, We'll find out that there are enemies in this dungeon that use poison abilities and to maybe prioritize buying antidotes. In fact, let's go to our item shop and make sure that they can actually purchase antidotes. So we've got potion. Let's also make sure that they can buy some magic water. And then finally, the antidotes. I do want to add one more NPC for another hint for our dungeon. I'll put her right here. I'll pick this lady down here. And she will say, did you know that cave bats take extra damage from light attacks? And this will help the player know that they can use radiant burst on the cave bats for some extra damage. Feel free to add more NPCs for flavor here. Maybe there can be an NPC here that says, I heard there's a big scary monster at the end of the dungeon, just to prep the player for what's to come. And that's all for this episode. I hope it was helpful. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more RPG Maker videos. I will see you in the next one. Bye!